and what's up everybody welcome back it's joey bags today's video um actually it's gonna be about something that i haven't talked about and quite honestly after seeing shout out to dan dimaggio awesome youtuber so i was just sitting here at work you know click clacking away doing what i do and i got a notification on my phone and it was his new video where he is giving his first looks at i think it was an omega gt sim rig and i'm watching the video i'm like wow you know what i've been in the sim race hobby for about a year now I, th I think it's going on a year now and i've been doing the youtube thing since about september i think that was the first video and i have not done a video about my rig uh i think i've shown it in some pictures actually i think i did a quick brief video about it but it was on my other channel it's my uh detailing channel dragonfly detailing uh yeah dragonfly detailing fla so on this channel i haven't had it so after seeing his i'm like oh, you know what not to rip off an idea but it was a good idea then i'm like you know what i think i need to do a video on the rig because i'm always talking about it i'm talking i'm always raving about how much i really enjoy my nlr cockpit but uh, and i show it and you see it in the videos but i've never actually done a breakdown and after ordering it what was it uh i ordered the one part then the second part in march so we're going on at least nine months or so with it using it every day for a few hours every day i think i can give you a solid solid review so two minutes or so into the video i'm gonna give you the tldw because i know i'm gonna say I want to make a quick video and 45 minutes in and I'm still going. This probably isn't going to be a quick video. TLDW, I have the Next Level Racing Challenger cockpit. It started off as the racer foldable wheel stand. I then added the seat, the Challenger seat. And then for shits and giggles, I decided to get the monitor mount also. So I got the whole complete set. Um, I picked it up off of Amazon um, and I love it. I really do. I've been using it every day. Um, do I wish the seat had a little bit more padding, was a little bit more comfortable? Yeah, but I'm. it, it, it works for me and I'm looking at different seat options. I've been doing that for about a month or so, but I keep getting sidetracked with some other stuff. For its price, I mean, I don't even know if you can still find it. I checked on Amazon and I wasn't able to see it. I'm sure you might be able to, you know, search Google and, you know, Google shopping and come up with it. I think I paid around $235 for the rig, for the complete rig, and about another 100 for uh, the monitor mount and it's Amazon. So, you know, shipping was included. Um, so you're looking at like maybe $335. <clears throat> it's an awesome, it's an awesome rig, especially if you're a beginner, if you don't know, or maybe you just started. And yeah, if you just started, I think it's a good rig. All the other particulars, I'm going to get deeper into the video, but this is the TLDW. It was inexpensive. It's well built. It's well thought out. I like it. I recommend it. If you're able to find one and you want something small, you want something compact, you want something you can put on wheels and move around if you need to, I recommend the NLR Challenger cockpit. Now, we're gonna get into the in-depth video. So I'll roll in a picture of the Amazon ad that I had gotten it. I could probably go to NLR's website, but you know, that's probably easier for me to get. So it is the Next Level Racing Challenger cockpit. It consists of, th mine is three pieces. So <clears throat> when I originally started sim racing, I started with a G29. 
and I attached it to the desk and I'm in the actually office chair you see that I'm in now, just a regular IKEA office chair. <coughs> actually mounted to a desk very similar to this. <coughs> and while, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm so sorry. And while it wasn't bad, um, it was not very ergonomic. And the whole breaking, uh, really it was breaking in the pedals that was kind of being the big deal for me, especially the way I was set up. It wasn't ergonomic and wasn't comfortable. So I decided, you know what? I need at least a wheel stand. Now, at that time, I had my consoles, my Xbox and my PlayStation in my bedroom. And my gaming PC has always been here in my office, which is now office slash uh, studio. And I went into my bedroom and I measured the amount of space that I had between where I have my dresser and TV and my consoles and where my bed is and I'm taking measurements and I had about 24 inches of space that I could work with. <clears throat> so hitting the webs, I found Next Level Racing's racer wheel stand. It had the footprint for the pedal plate that I was looking for at 24 inches. It was foldable. So it's a center post design and you undo the latch and it folds over. <clears throat> it has four these four pads at the feet that I was able to change out for casters. So I could roll it from the office to the bedroom. I ordered that, I'm like, okay, I think this is gonna change some things around. I ordered that and I set up the G29 on it and I used it. And in the office, it was workable. I mean, I still kind of had the problem with now the office chair being a pain in the butt. Took it to the bedroom to try it out with the PlayStation and the Xbox. It fit, it worked exactly how I wanted it to. The sticking point was the G29. It's loud. Anybody who owns a G29 knows the clickety clack of that when you're going in the force feedback is loud. My the times I usually get to sit in the rig is usually when I've already got the kids in bed, when I've got the wife in bed, and I have some time to myself to just unwind. <laughs> Shout out to wonderful Mrs. Bags. I love you. You're awesome. So when everybody's asleep is when I can do my thing. That's also why a lot of times you get those videos at 2, 3 a.m. That's when I have my me time. So with the G29 being so loud, that was a no-go. Uh, uh, I used it once and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm driving. And she's like, it's loud. I'm like, okay. So I decided to bring everything from the bedroom to the office. So I set everything up and while it was kind of okay, the whole office chair in the stand just wasn't working for me. So I start digging around, poking around, looking on Amazon. And of course they, you know, they always show you, oh, you got this, or if you buy this, you can add this add-on. <clears throat> and I came across the Challenger seat. It's an add-on for, they offer two wheel stands. One is the racer and the other is the wheel stand light. Now the wheel stand racer with the one that I got has a latch that allows the the um, wheel uh, the wheel plate to fold down. The wheel stand light doesn't. It doesn't fold over. And I'm like, okay. So those are the two wheel stands they have. So they have the Challenger add-on seat to make it the whole cockpit. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I go ahead and I'm looking at the price and it was like 200 and I want to say like 250 something bucks for the seat. I'm like, okay. But then I see the whole cockpit, which is the seat and the stand for like $235. I'm like, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to buy the whole cockpit. I already have one stand. I can use the seat with that and I'll just keep the second the other stand that it comes with i'll just keep that in a box and i'll just always have an extra stand i ordered that 
And then they also <clears throat> add in, you know, when you're when you're going through Amazon, you know they know how to get you. Then they had the monitor stand for it. I'm like, well, at the time I was debating still. That was when I was trying out triples, you know, with how I had my office set up. I had a triple screen and um, I was also doing VR. So I kind of wasn't sure, but I was like, you know what? For an extra hundred bucks, let me get the monitor stand. I'm at that point, I can figure something out. <laughs> Got everything in and I set up the seat, the challenger seat with the racer light no with the with the racer uh wheel stand that i had bolted everything together and it felt awesome you know having everything in a proper place you know so now i can actually hit my pedals and not worry about my seat going back you know being aligned everything worked well at that point i'm like okay i've got triple monitors I ordered some monitor arms. I reconfigured my desk around. So now I've got my triple screen. It was triple 27s. And I put the cockpit on wheels. So now I can, you know, wheel it to part of my office when I'm not using it when I'm at work. And then when I'm ready to race, I can just, you know, wheel it back around, set my monitors into place and do that or test out VR because that's where I was at that point. <clears throat> I did that for a little while until I realized I wasn't using it as much because I didn't want the setup, the setup and the breakdown, the setup and the breakdown after a while became tedious and a little bit annoying. So at that point, I'm just like, I've got to make a decision here. The setup and breakdown is being coming up in the butt do I want to keep doing this every time I want, you know, I want a sim race. I just kind of want to jump in, turn everything on, jump in and go. I redesigned the office third time. <clears throat> so this, the last time I did it, which is in the current configuration, which you've seen pictures of, and I've added in videos. And actually the last video where I did the little intro walking in from my kitchen, you kind of saw how my office is. This is the, this is the last iteration of the office and this will probably be the last one until i move sometime at the end of the year and then that'll be its own you know little thing i decided you know what i'm going to ditch the triples i know i know everybody's just like why would you ditch triples to set the things up the way i wanted it to make it easier for me i would have to go with a single screen now i had considered going an ultra wide the space that I was given, well, the space that I ended up with, I couldn't go with like a 49 inch ultra wide. And even then, we all know, while well, it's great that you've got this nice wide, you know, field of view, they kind of scrunch in. That's what you kind of give up. Uh, this is why I think like 27 to 32 inch screens seem to be like that sweet spot when you want to do triples, unless you want to be like Will over at Boosted Media with. 65 inch triples but you know he's running a 4090 i'm running a 6950 xt i could probably do it but my frame rate's probably gonna tank if i try to do it at 4k like he does i'd probably have to do it like 1080 which still isn't bad anyway so i couldn't do my triples but i did have my vr headset so i was like oh you know what i've always got my vr i've got my quest too if i want that immersion yes i have to deal with the motion sickness whatever but i've always got that option so at that point i set up the cockpit in the corner that it's at now i redesigned the office i'm like okay this will work for right now because also this isn't a permanent setup you know i have plans of moving to at the end of the year so with that will come a newer bigger space i'll have a nice bigger area to dedicate to the rig so for right now this is okay um, I started measuring out different screen sizes that would work <laughs> and I came across, um, well, I'm currently using a 32, an old 32 that my kids had in their room. I kind of borrowed their 40, their 40 inch. And I found, I also tried my 55 inch from my bedroom here. I felt the 55 inch was just way too tall. You know, even if I started adjusting it, I just, <clears throat> the 55 wasn't working well for me. The 32, I feel is a bit small, but for right now, I'm dealing with it. 
the 40 inch was that sweet spot for my rig and how everything is set up. So, you know, <clears throat> if you have a next level racing cockpit and you kind of want to do a screen, I've seen plenty of people that do large screens. I've seen them do 55 plus. And if you're okay with that, I guess, but for me and my usage, the 55 was just a little bit too big, actually. It was just a little bit too tall. Anyway, so I set that up and I use my racer light wheel stand connected with the Challenger seat. So that makes that Challenger cockpit. I added the wheel, the monitor stand. So now I have that. At that point, I needed some place to put my PC. So I just went, I just went to Home Depot, picked up some shelf brackets and measured out the bolt holes for it. Um, I had to add two holes, one hole to each bracket just to, you know, make sure it goes in line with the spacing that uh, Next Level Racing has on the monitor bracket. Put those up, put a shelf across it, and that's where I have my PC. So you've seen the pictures, and I'll probably go in and give you a little walkthrough of everything here. <clears throat> but that's how I came across the current rig I have, the Challenger rig, was just coming and finding stuff on Amazon and seeing, hey, you know what, that's a cool little uh, rig there, and I think that might work for me. So let me take you off <clears throat> the tripod, and let's take a quick look at the stand. All right, my people, so here we are, and we're handheld. <clears throat> this is my next level racing Challenger cockpit. So here is my little backdrop that I made out of some PVC pipe, <clears throat> just really to hide the mess of SIM equipment that I have behind me. I mean, you can see there's my GTDD Pro, there's all my Fanatec stuff, there's the boxes for the canvas, there's the Moza, I've got PXM boxes there, I've got a PXM, I've got my V12 direct drive there, I've got the replacement in a box over there, and wheels, I've got the wheels there. So this backdrop here is really just to hide that mess. So here is the cockpit. So you can see this here is a separate, now when you order it, and you order the entire cockpit, it's <clears throat> it's two sections. It's the seating section along with the seat, which is in two pieces. Now, <clears throat> this chair is movable. You can go ahead and move it forward and back to give it a little bit of lean. The hinge design on this is absolutely horrible. Next level racing, please. I mean, I think you've already discontinued this rig, but this seating bracket here was absolutely horrible. It had one uh, screw knob there and it just never held right um i went ahead and just used two bolts that were the same size and put them in to kind of lock it into place it still moves but it's at an angle which is somewhat comfortable for me <clears throat> the material on this seat is actually not bad at all it is comfortable it is also very easy to clean um if you guys know or if i maybe mentioned it I am into car detailing, and I actually think I did a video of me detailing this seat, which is actually on my detailing channel. Um, <clears throat> sorry. The material is really nice. It's <clears throat> somewhat breathable. Uh, does hold a lot of dust um, really well. I mean, you can see it's a little bit of shiny. I don't know if, I mean, that's coming off super shiny there. Um... The padding isn't the, a lot, at least this part is, you know, it's comfortable. I, I sit here for hours at a time and quite honestly, I really don't complain too much. <laughs> it does come with a shifter mount, which is actually wide enough that I was able to mount my PXN A7 shifter and my PXN handbrake on the same mount. So that was actually really cool and I can keep it on the side that's really convenient to get to. Uh, here you go, you can see this here is the latch which allows this center post that holds the wheel to fold down. Now I know a lot of people are not fans of the center post design. 
you know, and I can understand where, yes, it does get in the way. And if you want a ingress and egress from this uh, cockpit quickly, if you're young and limber, yes, I can see you doing that very easily. If you're a little old, <laughs> like I am, and not as limber, stretching that leg and knee up, you know, past can be kind of a, it can be kind of a pain. <laughs> and where I mounted my emergency stop, I can tell you, I hit this all the time. I hit this, this is PXN's e-stop button. <laughs> I hit this all the time. Uh, this is the wheel plate that I have drilled so many holes into besides the ones that it comes with. I have drilled so many holes in it for the Moza, for the PXN. Um, actually the Camus, I only it used two. I didn't, I could drill two more, but I was able to securely mount this with two. <clears throat> and there is the pedal plate. Now the cool part about the pedal plate. Now let's see if we can get in there. It's on a crossbar that's held in by two bolts on each side. As you can see, those two bolts are mirrored on the other side. <clears throat> that is actually a rather solid pedal plate. That pedal plate is pretty damn thick. And it has bends at the front and at the back. I don't know if you can kind of pick it up, but let's see. Uh, it's got a little lip here that's bent over here in the back, here in the front. And it does the same in the back the other way. Those two bends add a lot of rigidity to this steel plate. And with all these slots, it actually makes it rather easy to figure out holes to mount your plate, your pedals to. I have yet to have an issue mounting the PXN pedals, the Moza pedals. I have no, pr I don't have any doubt that I'll be able to mount the Fanatec pedals. <clears throat> The PXN A3 pedals, which were junk, I had no problems with that. And also my G29 pedals. I had no problem mounting pedals to this. It's really rigid. With the G29, I did do the load cell upgrade to my brake from Rick Motec. Shout out to Rick Motec. And I don't have much flex. There is some flex. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, there's no flex. It's like super solid. It is rigid but the amount of flex is very minimal. The cool part is that NLR included these two extremely long bolts that you can put into that last slot at the top that will run down to two bolt holes at the front crossbar to give you extra stability. I haven't needed those. That is actually how sturdy this has been. I haven't needed them, but if you did need it, P, um, uh, Next Level Racing did include that option. And in this setup, they include those bolts. <laughs> Here you can see the monitor arms. So the monitor stand bolts right into the side there. And the cool part is that it uses the same holes as the crossbar for the pedal plate. So <clears throat> you can go ahead and set this up for your size however you want and however you'd however close you'd like the monitor. Ah, uh, if you can see how close I have the monitor there, I could go a little bit closer, but I think at the distance that I have it now, I'm very happy with it. Uh, we'll come up. You can see my mess of cable management, which is the problem of constantly testing out equipment. Ah, it's always a rat's nest of cables just because I've got, and you can see I've got like three different power bricks there and I'm just going back and forth with different power plugs for each one. It just makes it easier to leave it there and just plug them in as I need. USB cables, I'll have like one set ran for just the main wheelbase and then the auxiliaries like the shifter, the handbrake, and all the other little extras that you may need. This is also where I have my switchers and my converter boxes that connect my consoles to my PC so that way I can capture the video from it. Here you can kind of see the brackets that I got for the shelf and 
I added a little extra arm. If you might be able to see it back in the distance. Let's see if we can get that to focus. It's not focusing, but there is a extra arm back there giving a little bit of uh, extra stability to this shelf just in case. I'm not worried about it at all, but just in case. And there you can see <clears throat> the way the monitor stand is, is actually a typical TV mount. It's a, a normal TV mount. So that's super awesome. You can go, I think they safely say up to 65 inches on here. I think, don't quote me, maybe I'll add it in. I'll take a look at the at the literature and type in the actual size. <coughs> so for my convenience, what I did is I had these extra monitor arms laying around. And I got, I grew tired of using those small little wireless keyboard mice type deals, you know, they're like all in ones, they fit in the palm of your hand. I really kind of got tired of using that, especially when I had to sit here and, you know, maybe try to edit a video or do some type of web surfing on my computer if I actually needed to look for something. So I used these arms and I made a mouse pad and a keyboard holder that goes ahead and is fully articulated. So I can go ahead and move this as I need. I can move it, come in close, come in far. Uh, it's pretty much just as articulated as you would have your monitor be, but now it holds my keyboard and the other one holds my mouse. So while I'm sitting here, it's real easy to just kind of pull it close toward me and I have it right within arm's reach and that's for both items. I mean, those are two things that I added on that were not included with the Next Level Racing cockpit. Uh, these are not even close to being standard. These are my custom mods. They don't even sell these kind of modifications. Um, the good of this uh, unit <laughs> is that it's very inexpensive. Um, it's rather compact. I mean, you see all my extras here, but quite literally, uh, if you have just the G29, the seat, and the TV, I mean, this is pretty much all you need, and this is a rather compact setup. You know, I've got these extras where I've got my PC uh, shelf back there. I've got, you know, mouse and keyboard arms to the side. Um, I've got my headphone, my microphone bolted to the wall to kind of ease up on some of the vibrations that I was getting because I had it mounted to the rig, <clears throat> but I was getting some vibrations every time I, uh, I shifted. So to combat that, I mounted it to the wall since it was there and convenient. Some bad points about this cockpit. The center post setup can be quite annoying when, as I said, when you're ingressing and egressing from the stand. Also, because it's a tube slid in a tube held in place by fr force from these knobs here, there is some side-to-side -side movement of the wheel plate. Um, I did tighten this down so the side to side movement and forward to back, <coughs> forward to back <coughs> of this tube is almost non-existent. Side to side lateral movement, there is a little and you can hear it squeak. And in my videos, a lot of times you can hear that squeaking. <sighs> it does get worse as the uh, newton meters of the direct drive go up. I did have a 10 newton meter direct drive on here at one point, the PXN V12 DDS, and I felt that was way too much for this. Um, I really feel like this is a optimal stand for eight and under. Um, easily five and under, but I think you can take it up to eight <coughs> just because I did have that one turned to 80% and it wasn't as bad. 
But even with the G29, this issue is persistent. So this constant, I don't know if you can see it. This kind of shake in the wheel plate. This is the most annoying of anything. <clears throat> and yeah, it could be easy, you know, just adding in some supports here to maybe there. I, I don't know. I could probably do something, but... At that point, I feel I might as well just upgrade to an 80-20 rig. But those are really <clears throat> the only two shortcomings that I can really, you know, come down to it. The construction is extremely solid. The steel that they used in uh, this whole cockpit is actually really good. The powder coating is really nice also. Uh, like I said, I've had this now for almost a year. We're talking about maybe 9 to 10 months, probably close to the 10 months. So we're getting close to that year mark. <laughs> and I wipe it down, and she's been great. Um, I really have nothing to complain other than those two points, you know. This whole wheel shake, which can get annoying and also does affect at some point the feel of force feedback because this shake can dampen the natural force feedback that's coming from the wheel so you know while i tend not to really have that big of an issue with force feedback i tend to feel it really well when the power is kicked up on some of these direct drives i do feel it quite a bit more as you can see, if I really get into it, it will start to shake. So, you know, that can affect some of the feel of it. I'm not going to, you know, hide that fact. But if you're using a G29, quite honestly, you maybe you're not going to get that kind of shake. You might get just a little bit from you, you know, moving the wheel as you're driving. If, you know, I, that's kind of like a habit of me. For some reason, I feel like I move the wheel. But, um, yeah, you can see the little movement there that's really the biggest issue with this setup and those are the two biggest issues is you know it being a center post design so getting in and out is a kind of a pain in the butt and that shake because it's a center post design those are really the only two shortcomings that i can come about it though the seat i guess we can add that as a third but this is on rails actually uh, uh rail sliders and they to what i remember from my car race you know from my 20s and modifying cars uh these look like normal seat rails that i can just dump a bucket seat on and from my measurements i can just dump a bucket seat on here and i'm good to go so um that's always an option i mean like if i really wanted to i can hit up a you pull it and get myself <clears throat> a decent, comfortable, actual car seat bolted onto here. And that's a moot point at that point. You know, we've got the chair taken care of and you can get that inexpensive. <clears throat> you know, this here is a bigger problem that, you know, <sighs> takes a little bit more engineering, I guess, to, you know, sort out. For right now, I'm dealing with it and it's okay. But I do feel that it's something that I will need to address, especially as I keep reviewing more hardware, more direct drives, more direct drives with more newt meters. That's going to be a big problem. But guys, that is it. This is my next level racing cockpit, uh, Challenger cockpit. Um, if you have any questions, you know, any comments, of course, as always, leave them down below and i'll get to them <clears throat> we are officially at 300 subs and it's like the first week and a half of the new year you guys are amazing i can't thank you enough to my multinational coalition of viewers you know my viewers from around the world my people i can't thank you enough for making this such an amazing experience thank you thank you thank you and as always i say don't forget to hit that like button 
If you feel I've earned your sub, please go ahead and sub. And if you do, hit that notification button so that way you're notified when I drop those videos at 2 a.m. <laughs> when I drop those videos for you. And with that, I'll leave you maybe a short video, probably not, but I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.